So I promised we'd learn more about the Instruments of Christ Church, and so specifically, we are going to focus on the organ for a little bit, and going to show you both of the pipe closets, but first, going to start with the, the part of the organ which you as the congregation actually visually see. And so I brought along an expert today to give us a little more of that knowledge, and here he is, the music director of... <coughs> Christ Church to tell us about the Arison organ and to give us at least a sense as to this part of the organ before we go explore other pieces. Well, good morning. <clears throat> Most people look at this and they think, oh, that's the organ. Well, it's far from the case. It's a small piece of it. It's the control center. So we thought we would start today by showing you a little bit about what some of these things are that you see up here every Sunday. Obviously, there are three keyboards and pedal keys, and that's because the organ is divided into uh, various ensembles. Uh, centuries ago, when uh, organ building was a little more in its infancy, uh, builders discovered that you could have contrasting tonal effects by having multiple keyboards, and the, the pipes and the stops that go with each keyboard essentially uh, create a small organ of its own, so each each section of the organ could actually stand on its own as, a, as an independent instrument. And <clears throat> so the keyboards, you obviously know what, what we do with those, and the pedal keys played by the feet control bass pitches. Underneath the keys, you'll see little white buttons, and down below at the pedal keyboard, you see these chrome-plated knobs. Uh, these are controls for preset combinations of, of stops. So as you press these, these are combinations of stops that I have already, already preset. If one wants to uh, change that, you can, you can set a combination of stops. You press a little setter button and the button where you want that preset combination. And when you press that, the stops come back because that's memory has been stored. These controls that we refer to as stops, these engage, either turn on or turn off uh, various sets of pipes. A set of pipe, or what we refer to as a rank of pipes, is an individual pipe for every key on the keyboard. So for instance, each one of these stops corresponds to a set of 61 pipes because a, 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 an organ pipe only speaks one pitch and it only speaks at one volume. If you ever look close, you'll see a bunch of mysterious names engraved on the stops and uh, numbers. The numbers have to do with the actual pitch. For instance, if you put on a stop that has an eight-foot marking and you play middle C, it's the same pitch as middle C on the piano. So any stop that you put on, no matter what the sound might be, that has an eight-foot marking, you will always get a pitch that corresponds exactly to the keys on the piano. A four-foot pitch is an octave higher. So an eight-foot pitch, a four-foot pitch, and then there's a two and two-thirds, and then a two. And then there are stops that have Roman numerals that are called mixtures, and these, this particular one has four pipes per note, and the mixture stops that give the organ that the very brilliant cap on its ensemble. But each one of these pitches actually corresponds to a natural overtone in the eight-foot stop. So when you put them together, they weld together as if it was a, a, a single note. Now there are different types of stops. What, what I've just used for this little demonstration is called a principle. And that is the basic sound of the organ, the, the sound that only the organ can, can produce. Uh, principles appear in each of the divisions at various pitches, but along with that, there are various flute stops. This is called a whole flute. These are pipes that are made of wood. very soft flute stop called a gemshorn, which 
Amusingly enough, if you translate it from the German, it means goat horn. And then there's a four foot chimney flute because the pipes have little chimneys on the top. And on the bottom keyboard, there's one called a block flute, which is imitative of, of a, a, a recorder. Another wooden flute. And just like this, the uh, pitches that we've described before, there are various pitches of flute stops as well. So if you put on an eight, four, two and two thirds, two, one and three fifths, if you listen to that very, very low on the keyboard, it almost forms a chord. Because those stops are tuned to the natural overtones, they blend together as a single sound. And you can change that by, for instance, taking out the four and the two. In addition to the flute stops, there are stops that we refer to as string tone voices. <clears throat> very, very thin, somewhat soft. And then there's a stop that accompanies that, which is essentially, I, the pipes are identical, but they're deliberately tuned a little bit sharp. So they're a little out of tune with the first one, which creates a little wave in the sound, a sort of undulating effect. And then you come to some of my favorites, which are the reed stops. Uh, the, the most powerful is the trumpet on the great division. That's the middle keyboard. And then it has a counterpart in the pedal. Which is the 16-foot trombone. There's another trumpet plays from the upper keyboard, which is over here in the right-hand chamber. Which is a little darker and smoother than the other one. Then there's an oboe. And this bassoon. Now this is a 16-foot stop, which plays an octave lower than the 8-foot. stop called the shalmai, which is imitative of, it, of an ancient reed instrument, and one called a crumb horn. Again, it's an, uh, an, imitate, an imitation of an ancient double reed instrument. And one called a vox humana. This is a very old style stop that was originally conceived to imitate distant voices, human voices, that is. Doesn't sound much like the choir, but if you turn on the tremolo, which creates a vibrato effect, it's a very subjective imitation at best. And when you put the whole thing together, you have, three you have three different, distinctly different ensembles that play from the keyboards. Each one with its own particular color and, and, and power level. So in addition to all of this, there are some things that are really quite new to this instrument that I think some of you are already aware of. The organ has, now has a digital relay system which connects the organ console to the rest of the instrument and its mechanics. And it allows the console to be connected via a, a little Cat5 data cable. And that allows the, the organ console to be positioned in different locations. Uh, along with that system comes a couple of very handy little, uh, uh, little additions, uh, one of which is the ability to record 
piece of music and have the organ play it back, minus the organist. mistakes and all. So it's, the organ is actually playing, it's not an audio recording, but all of the signals, electrical signals that come from the contacts under the, under the keys are recorded digitally so that when you want to play it back, it actually, the system actually plays the music back exactly as the organist has played it. So that basically is, a, well, a couple of other things I should point out because they relate to things that you'll see once we get upstairs into the organ chambers. There are three pedals that look a little bit like accelerator pedals, and they have nothing to do with how fast I play. Uh, these control sets of large wooden shades up in the organ chambers. Now, I mentioned earlier that an organ pipe always speaks at the same volume, but it is possible to, to alter that. For instance, if we put on the eight-foot trumpet in the swell division, and we open this center pedal, sound get progressively louder. All of the pipes that play from the upper keyboard are enclosed in a large wooden enclosure and on the sides facing out into the nave and, and into the chancel are sets of large wooden shades that look like vertical Venetian blinds and they're controlled with these pedals and as they open they allow more sound out and as they close they, they attenuate the sound. And on the other side of the organ in the left hand chamber uh, pipes that are, are played from the lower keyboard are affected the same way. Use the, the, the pedal on the left. The pedal on the right is called a crescendo pedal. Now this is, in, in, with this digital relay system, that's programmable, but it is set up so that if you start with no stops on and you graduate, you can set it so that it, stops progressively come on from softer to louder and that's called a crescendo pedal. So that is a nutshell tour of the organ console uh, as to what all of these can all of these controls do. Uh, from here we're going to go into the left organ chamber for the next installment and then we'll climb up into the the right chamber which is uh, the section of the organ that was added uh, about 10 years ago now. So we will uh, we'll continue this inside, and uh, as I say, that's about it for the for the organ console. But it gives you an idea of of what some of these uh, some of these controls are are doing, and what I'm playing with up here. When my wife says I love to play with buttons, so we'll be back in the left organ chamber uh, for the next installment. So there you go, and that's why I don't play that thing. Way too many buttons for me, far too confusing. But as I said in our first video, this is the very heart of the church, and its presence here is to guide congregational singing. So as much as we enjoy the prelude, postlude, and the other big pieces, its main purpose is to provide the backbone of our hymnody to guide our singing together. So we'll see you up in that first organ chamber very soon.